Morning, my name is Lee. Welcome back to the channel. So as you can see, my new milling machine has arrived. Uh, so this is from Amadil. It's a VM32L R8 with Drow. So I'm going to take you through the unboxing. Let's take a look. It's the first time I've ever owned or used a mill. So this is a learning experience for me, but hopefully you guys can learn with me as I try and unbox it, get it lifted onto the bench, uh, and then clean it up and get it ready for the first cut. So let's go. So I think the plan is to put some straps around the head, uh, making sure I don't catch on any of the DRO reader, and then lift it with the crane and put it straight onto the bench here. So that looks like the plan of action, but I'm just gonna walk around it, undo the bolts that are holding it to the pallet, just generally check it. I'm thinking I might lower the headstock as low as it can go as well, just to keep the center of gravity low when I'm lifting. So there it is, my new milling machine. So I got it from a company called Amadil in the UK. They sell the uh, Weiser or Weiss machines. So that's a VM32L, uh, Chinese made, uh, just imported. Uh, and it's finally arrived today, as you've seen. So there's a few things I need to do to get it set up. Uh, obviously I've just checked it just to make sure it powers on, etc., and it seems to be okay. So before we start cleaning and oiling the machine, I thought I'd take a look at what we've actually got. So let's take a closer look. Test sheet and instructions. The manual for the DRO. I think it's a Sino brand DRO. Right, let's see what's in here. So Amadil were very kind to include some T-nuts in there, 14 millimeters, I believe, for this machine. So that's kind of them, that was free, just came with the machine. Looks like we have an ER32 six mil collet. 
and they've also provided I can't see what size this one is I'll find out in a minute so that's really good to get me started we've also got a box here ah okay they've actually provided me some parallels just to get me started. So when I uh, made the order, I did ask if they had any unsellable equipment for the milling machine that they could actually provide me. So it looks like they had some old parallels that they've actually put in the box for me. That is very kind of them. I didn't pay for that. So that is a, a really nice value add because I'm going to need these, obviously, when I set the machine up. So that's pretty good. Two collets, some tea nuts and some parallels. Right, let's check the toolbox. So in here, looks like we've got a cheap oiler. Yeah, very cheap oil can. Although I do like needle nose, that could come in handy but I doubt I'll use this. Some spanners. Looks like they've provided a Jacob's chuck as well. This one is a three to 16 millimeter chuck. That means I can't see an arbor in the box, so I assume it's already in the machine. Yeah, so I'll just check the arbor for this is actually in the machine. That's what would be a JT33 arbor, I assume. Some screwdrivers. Oh, of course, the handles. In fact, I might as well put those on in a second. Oh, they're a bit grubby, so I think I'll clean those up first with a bit of WD-40, and then I'll screw them onto the machine. A couple of nuts, washers, and bolts. I have no idea what they're for. There's only two of them. It looks like I have no idea what that is, a handle of some sort. Uh, I'm gonna have to check the machine to see where this handle actually goes. <laughs> Set of hex keys or Allen keys. Always handy, although I've got so many of them now, I don't know what to do with them all, but that's good. So I think the next job is to start cleaning the handles and cleaning the machine. For that, I'm gonna need some WD-40. It's the easiest way to clean it. Uh, and then I'll put some whey oil on all the uh, uh, ways, the slide ways on the machine. So let's jump over to the machine and start doing that. So first job is just give it a clean with some WD-40, wipe the whole machine down. It actually feels pretty good. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting uh, some raised metal, but I can't feel anything on there. So that's a good start. I was gonna put the handles on after a bit of a clean. I noticed there are a tiny bumps on here. I think it's overspray from the paint possibly. I tried getting it off with my fingers and with the rag, but it doesn't seem to come off. Uh, so I've just got a stone and WD-40 uh, and I'm just gonna very, very lightly just see if I can remove it. Yeah, I can feel that there's actually lumps in there. Yeah, that feels much better now. I'm just gonna very lightly just take the stone and just pass it across here just to make sure. Cause now I've cleaned it, I'm just double checking. So it feels like some of the paint is raised uh, above the surface. 
Um, yeah, so I'm just going to do exactly the same, just really gently. Yeah, it feels good. Okay, so it's been cleaned and oiled now. So everything's pretty good. I've already gone round with an Allen key and the screwdrivers and things just to make sure all the bolts are done up. So the main thing to do now is actually start it up and just let it run for a few minutes at a relatively low RPM. So we'll do that now. So that all looks good. The next job now is to get the vise on there. Well, actually first what I'll do is I'll just check the alignment. So I will put in one of the collets into there. I've got an ER32 uh, R8 collet holder. So I'll put a collet in there. I actually made myself a device for holding a dial test indicator. So it's just two pieces of brass. One of them is 18 mil that I'm gonna put in an 18 mil collet. And then I can put the dial test indicator on there and just check the level, make sure the tramming's okay. So let's get this set up and do that now. So I've put the bar on uh, with the test dial indicator uh, and I've just put some parallels on there so I can measure the tram of the table. Uh, all I've done is I've lowered this down so it reads zero on the test indicator and I've also locked off the head using the head lock screws just on the side there. So let's take a look at what we're getting. So hopefully you can see that. I've set the dial to zero just to see it is working. Now I swing it round and see what's on the other side. Well, that looks excellent straight out the box. That is one one hundredth of a millimeter. So. 0 0.01, maybe 0 0.015. Uh, to me, that sound, seems like more than accurate enough for what I need to do. Uh, let me just give you a closer look. So hopefully you can see that. It's just off a of zero. I think it's uh, 0 0.01, maybe 0 0.015 millimeters. And I'll just swing it back and double check. Hopefully you can see that, that is back on exactly zero again. So just for a quick test, I think I'm only one one hundredth of a millimetre out. Uh, so that's 0 0.01 millimetres. So let's just try that again.
Yeah, back there again. One one hundredth. I think I've got incredibly lucky. Uh, so the next job now is to set the vice up on here. So let's do that. So I've put the vice on and got the bolts and nuts that the vice came with. But what I found is these are way too small. So I don't have enough room to put the nut on the end of it. Uh, but then I remembered that I actually got two bolts. If you remember, inside my toolbox, it came with two spare bolts and I didn't know what they were for. This is exactly what they're for. They're for the vise. So I can put these in and these are, are much longer. So I can start to clamp this down and, and get this in. So I just do a rough alignment and I'll put those on and we'll start to uh, align the vise. This one seems to have a faulty thread, so I'm just going to fix the thread on this because the screw, uh, the bolt won't actually go down. So the nuts are just finger tight on there at the moment. Let's just get a rough idea of where we are. Just using the fine quill dial. So I'm just going to bring this in so it measures halfway on 40. And then I can roughly start getting it in. Let's just see where we are. So it's lower further back on that side, so I need to tap that side forwards. Okay, so that feels really close now. So I just need to tighten up one of the uh, bolts on the side. Uh, because when you tighten it, it's probably going to move it slightly and then I can just try and tap it in leaving one side loose. Okay, so that looks good. That's within one one hundredth of a millimetre. So I'm going to leave it there. Let's do the first test cut. All right, so I've got the vise in. I've put a 12 mil uh, end mill in there. I've got my parallels. I've got a couple of parallels which should sit below the vice jaws. I have a small stainless steel bar and I'm going to attempt to square a piece of rough cut stock. So this is just mild steel rough cut. Uh, let's see if I can square it using the instructions I've found online. Uh, thank you Blondie Hacks and various others. Right, and now we'll go for the first cut. So I'm just going to zero the quill and lower it down slightly. It's 0.1 of a millimetre to start, so let's see if this works. Yeah, that worked perfectly. Let's go lower.
So that was my first time milling and the surface feels really good actually. I can, yeah, I can see the cut lines, but you can't feel them. That is smooth as anything. So I'm really happy with that. So all I need to do now is I'm gonna put it a bit lower and finish this because this end is a lot lower than this end. So let's just carry on and, and get this squared. That feels great. Looks really smooth, feels smooth. So then my first cut's complete. Uh, I think I still need to make some more adjustments. I think it, it felt like um, it was a little bit out of square. So I'm gonna check it against a square, but at least first cut's complete. The actual finish feels really good. Uh, I'm using a, a four flute carbide cutter. Uh, it's just what I picked up off Amazon. So no doubt it's a cheap Chinese one. Uh, but I've had a look at it and it still feels really sharp, so it hasn't blunted. Uh, I've also been practicing uh, climb milling, conventional milling, just to see what works and get, get to feel the differences between them. Um, but the surface finish feels excellent, so I'm really pleased with that. Uh, but I'll bring this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, no doubt the next video is going to be more about setup and using the machine as I, as I learn more and I'll take you along with me. So for now, I'll catch you later. Cheers.